Hello and welcome to Frequency of Change. We have motivation and inspiration today. And today I'm reading from the book called Embodiment. If you can see that on my phone, of course. Um, if uh, the manual you should have been given when you were born. Really, really good one, by the way. Embodiment um, by Dr. Dane here. And um, I, I'm getting today that I'd like to actually start, I'll read first and then talk after. And thank you for those of you who are here and I am so grateful for you. 10 second in increments instead of autopilot. Most of us live our lives on autopilot. Have you noticed that? We move through our lives on autopilot and come out of it only when there's a problem or we have to look <clears throat> that we have to look at to be able to shift and change. We shake ourselves out of autopilot and ask, okay, what is this? Oh, or, okay, how do I get rid of this? On the other side of autopilot is living in 10 second increments. Each 10 seconds of life is new. You get to choose what it's going to be. If you do everything in your life in 10 second increments, you will find you cannot make a wrong decision. You get angry for 10 seconds and get over it. <laughs> you love somebody for 10 seconds, you can get over that too. <laughs> that wasn't in the book, by the way. <laughs> Welcome, Patricia. <laughs> you have someone for 10 seconds. You can love anyone for any amount of time, no matter who they are. You can hate someone for 10 seconds. You can divorce your spouse for 10 seconds. You can love him or her in the next 10. If you live in 10 second increments, you create being in the present moment. Rather than living in the moment, most people go on autopilot or they try to create a plan and a system for the future based on making the right choice or decision that will handle everything forever. But there's only one place we can live and that's right here, right now. Anything else kills us. We don't get to have a life. We missed out on our own life. If you practice the art of choosing your life in 10 second increments, you will be, begin to create choice and awareness. If you had 10 seconds to choose the rest of your life, what would you choose? Wealth? Okay, those 10 seconds are over. You've got 10 seconds to live the rest of your life. What do you choose? Laughter, joy, consciousness? <clears throat> do you see how autopilot and 10 second increments of choice <clears throat> are mutually exclusive. If you're doing autopilot, you're not doing choice. If you're doing choice, you're not doing autopilot. On a potential humanoid embodiment day, you wake up, you perceive the bed you're lying in, in the softness of the sheets, you smell your soft scent in the pillow and the scent of whoever's sleeping next to you. You perceive the warmth of the sun shining in the windows you not only feel it, but you can perceive it, the vibration of it on your body. Then you make a choice for the next 10 seconds. What will it be? Sounds like a pretty cool way to start the day, don't you think? The level of perception and awareness is not something that you're necessarily going to step right into, but you can step into a lot of it. It takes practice. You have to be willing to have humanoid embodiment. You have to be willing to have awareness you have to be willing to develop total awareness with this beautiful thing called your body. Are you willing? And that again is from the book Embodiment, the manual you should have been given, everybody should have been given when they were born. <laughs> um, and a, another way to look at that too is like one of the things that I'll do is, um, well, let's even just start now, like for those of you watching now and in the future, like let's just take your deepest barriers down. Push them down, pull them down, way down. Destroy and create them. Awesome. Can you maybe perceive your body a little bit more? Can you perceive you a little bit more? Cool. So now you have 10 seconds to live the rest of your life. What do you choose? What would you like to choose? So for me, I'll get up 
And I'll even ask my body what it desires to wear. What does it desire to eat? Yesterday I did um, Tuesday Tool Time on Instagram and we talked about ease. And the other part of ease I wanted to talk about was we talked about how like ease is a choice. Patricia's choosing joy, awesome. Um, and, but then there's another side of ease. Like what if ease could be a priority in your life? What if everything you ask for is for ease? So for instance, let's say that you're thinking about eating something. Would you ask your body if it would create greater ease for you to eat it? Greater space, not many people pause long enough to ask if their food will create greater ease and space in their body before they eat it. When I started asking that question, it changed everything. Like, it, it wasn't cognitive in my head anymore. My body was like, yes, this will create more space. No, it won't. I'm noticing my body is actually doesn't require, it never required as much food as I was giving it. <laughs> um, and it really requires less and less. So you can also take that when you're eating, when you're actually like you've asked, okay, and this is the, this is the autopilot piece we wanna be careful of. Right, so we can ask our bodies, you're very welcome, Alyssa. Thanks for being here. Um, that like, okay, um, I get a, it will create greater space and ease, but then notice how quickly, oh, the body said it would create space and ease, so I'm just gonna eat all of it. Hang on a second. 10 second increments is, if you were chewing your food, not inhaling it, <laughs> <laughs> then it would probably take you 10 seconds to finish a bite. So then would you be willing for the second bite to go, will this, will this bite create greater space and ease for my body? And then maybe chew that for 10 seconds. It, it also gives you that practice of like chewing your food that everybody says you should do. <laughs> I'm funny. <laughs> anyway, um, so like, and then not going into the autopilot, like, oh, I got a yes. So that means I can just finish it all. That's actually not, that's not 10 second increments. That's not asking your body for everything, right? And maybe you put something on for clothes in the morning and your body's like, yeah, that was fun for a little while, but I'd like something else now. It's like, oh, that would you be willing to change your clothes, <laughs> right? I mean, how many times do we just put something on and we're like, oh, I'll just wear it throughout the day because, you know, I want to get one thing dirty and blah, blah, blah. That's autopilot. That's not asking a question. That's going, okay, body, what would you like to do now? Body, how would you like to move today, right? Not, oh, um, I, I do this every day. Like I walk the dog every day, right? That's my exercise every day. Well, that's not asking my body what it wants, how it wants to move today. That's saying I, I, my autopilot is I have to walk the dog. I walk the dog, check. I <laughs> completed that. Now move on to the next thing. Well, what if I was to ask, well, body, would you like to move another way today? What else would you like to choose today? Right? But it's always asking. And if you're having discomfort in your body and anything that doesn't allow you to ask, go destroy it and create it. Right, wrong, good, bad, puck, puddle, nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And if you're new to my videos in any way, that's the clearing statement. And you can find out all about it at theclearingstatement.com. Um, so, but like you're, we, we talked about food, we talked about movement, we talked about clothes. So let's say right now there's something going on in your body and it's uncomfortable, right? The body will speak to you and the body will give you whispers and knowings about what it likes and doesn't like. And if you're willing to keep asking the questions every 10 seconds and not go into autopilot, not just eat everything that's on, on the table because that's what everybody else is eating when your body's like, I just want yogurt or whatever, right? It's like, um, no, you can actually choose for you. You don't have to choose what everybody else is choosing. Um, 
and I know some of you just went into a beyond. So let's take our deepest barriers down. Choose for me, what's that? <laughs> well, if you'd like to learn how to make yourself a priority, I highly recommend jumping on my free Zoom on Friday. And we'll post the link here if you'd like to join us for that. Um, but like going, okay, so I have some discomfort going on in my body. Body, what is this? What do I do with it? Can I change it? If so, how can I change it? Now I will tell you this, and this is from personal experience too, is like the body will whisper, you'll have a knowing like that it doesn't really like something. And you might be like me and ignore it for a while until it starts like pounding. So um, I, was, I was having these breakouts on my face and I'm, I, let's just say I'm over 40. <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually I'm only 12 because I was born on leap year. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, maybe that was it. I was getting childhood acne because I still believe I'm 12. I, anyway, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> um, okay. So I was getting these breakouts and I was, I had decided now that notice how decision is not a question. I had decided that sugar was bad and well, any kind of sweetener was bad except for this new sweetener they have out right now called urethol, which is supposedly has no carbs in it, right? It's a big, that's the keto kind of sweetener that's going around. And I was like, so this is good. That is bad. I stopped asking questions. I went into total autopilot. I ate and a ton and drank, put it in my tea. I had um, urethal ice cream. I had like, I had it everywhere. Cause I was like, I can have this. And so I'm just going to keep eating it. And then I'm like breaking out going, I don't know, no, I don't know why. I'm thank you, Alyssa. She just put the, make yourself a priority free zoom. I think she's going to pop the link for us. It's awesome. Um, so, um, and I'm like, I don't know why I'm breaking out. I don't know why I'm breaking out. And then I get this like whisper to like go on a cleanse. And I didn't do a major cleanse. Thank you, thank you, Alyssa. I didn't go on a major cleanse. Um, I just went on kind of like give up, gave up meat and sweeteners and sugars, stuff like that. Coffee. I did give up caffeine too. Um, and my face clears up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. I kind of stopped asking. I went into total aisle of autopilot that the urethal was good for me and sugar was bad for me. And so I could eat all the urethal I wanted. That is not 10 second choice. That is not asking your body. That is not trusting the knowing because I did also have a little niggling in the back. We always do, by the way. And when you acknowledge it, you'll be like, oh yeah, I guess I kind of didn't know that. My body didn't really like that, but I ignored it. Right. And then, but if you keep ignoring the whispers, I will say this, it will get louder. It will start to be a little more in your face. Um, for me, it was on my face. <laughs> Whatever it is for you, right? Is it like really going, okay, what am I not listening to here? What am I not? Um, thank you, Alyssa. Um, what am I not willing to perceive, no be, and receive here, right? What have I not asked a question about? Is there some place I'm on autopilot? So anywhere where you might be on autopilot and have been unwilling to ask the question because you don't really want the answer because you like the conclusion and the autopilot that you've created, will you destroy and uncreate that times a godzillion? Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. I hope that creates some ease in your bodies. <laughs> I know it's created some for me. So I adore you and I will see you again next time. Bye. <laughs> Dang it all, my body has been really loud on this. Yes. <laughs> I hope it creates some ease. Mm -hmm.